All right, guys, today's instructional objective, students will be able to identify the process of landscape formation. And the do now says, what are three major landscape regions and how do they differ? And please include your name for credit. So what is this thing? You can see the horizontal bedrock. It's definitely at a higher elevation. All right, right, so this thing is a plateau. This one, same deal, plateau. So just a little bit of quick review. Plateaus are high elevation, horizontal sedimentary bedrock, and they have steep slopes. Now, this guy's a little bit different, right? Covered in snow, snow has nothing to do with it, but it's definitely got a bumpier um, surface to it. It's definitely much higher than uh, a plateau would be. And the biggest thing is there's no horizontal bedrock. They don't see horizontal lines crisscrossing uh, the surface. So this is a mountain. Mountains are high elevation, steep gradient, non-sedimentary. Generally speaking, it's going to be metamorphic rock, but yes, it can also be um, igneous. Generally speaking, though, if it's an igneous rock and it's a large structure like that, we're probably going to call that a volcano. Uh, it has faults, folds, and tilts. All right, so down to the new stuff for today. Uh, uplifting versus leveling forces. So uplifting forces are those constructional building forces. Sometimes we refer to these as orogenies. Now, you've probably heard the word um, genesis before. Genesis means the beginning of something. And oro is a Latin prefix for rock. Uh, so the beginning of rocks. That's essentially what that word means. It's mountain building. Earthquakes and volcanoes, they're both tied in with this whole orogeny idea. So when you have two plates bumping into each other, one's going to get kicked up and form a mountain. The other one's going to get kicked down, melt, and pop up as a volcano. Uh, we have faults, faults, and tilts. Tuh. Folds, faults, and tilts. Folds is where it bends. Fault is where it cracks. Tilt is where it tilts. We have seafloor spreading, also known as plate tectonics. And if uplift is dominant, we're going to have high elevation, steep slopes, sharp, jagged rocks. Now, other locations experience mainly uh, leveling forces, also known as destructional forces. This is primarily driven by gravity. Weathering and erosion all play a role. So weathering is the breakdown, erosion is the sweeping away. And ultimately, it all leads down to the breakdown of the crust. Now, in areas where leveling is dominant, we're going to find low elevation, gentle slope, and smooth shape. Now, I want to throw this out to you guys. Long Island, Brooklyn, Queens, where we live. Is it more leveling dominated or more uplift dominated? Is it that everything's being pushed up? Or is that things are being slowly worn down? Think about it. Don't be shy. You can either type it or call it out. Here in Brook, here in Brooklyn, are we experiencing mostly leveling forces? or uplift. Well, actually, we're talking more about leveling here. Yeah, Marjorie, leveling. And it's, it's all about we don't have mountains forming around us. And since there's no new mountains being created, any of the rain or snow that falls on us is going to drag whatever is a high point, it's going to drag it down. Now, when we are talking about areas that have high uplifts, like for example, we're talking about mountains, in its youth, in the beginning, uplift will be dominant. That's the thing that's pushing it up, right? Whether it's play tectonics or, or whatever. Once the mountain has reached a state of maturity and it's fully grown, leveling is going to begin. 
So rain at the top of the mountain is going to start to drag some of those rocks down, break them down, sweep them away. And at old age, where the mountain stops growing, leveling will become dominant and it will flatten out. And then sometimes we even get a rejuvenation where everything starts again. Now, uh, I want to show you, here's Google Maps. So we're going to take a look at two different areas. Here we have the Rocky Mountains. When you notice the Rocky Mountains, they go across several states, New Mexico, Colorado, Utah, Idaho, Montana, Washington State, and then up into Canada. These things are huge. Some of them are, are multiple miles high. Denver, Colorado is the city of Denver itself is over 5,000 feet up. So uplift is definitely dominant here. But then if we take a look at a place like the Appalachian Mountains, which run from Alabama all the way up into uh, Canada, right here, Pennsylvania and New York are part of the Appalachian Mountains. And these mountains are actually much older than the Rocky Mountains. And you would think that like, well, wouldn't these be younger because they're smaller? Well, actually, no, they're, they're smaller because they're older. As time goes on, things like rain and snow fall on them and sweep away most of the surface. And then eventually it all runs out into the ocean. Uh, if we take a look at a place like, for example, New Orleans, Louisiana, uh, the Mississippi River comes running through and it dragged out all the sediment. So all this brown and green stuff, all this land that you see here, didn't exist 100,000, 200,000 years ago. That was all transported by the Mississippi River. Pretty crazy, right? There's Mississippi. All right, so two major factors play a role. Arid versus wet environments. So arid means dry. Now, if you have a dry climate, like if you're in an area like a desert, you're going to find little vegetation. Now, that vegetation does prevent erosion, but there's just not a lot of it. So what ends up happening is you get quite a bit of erosion, and you do get sharp, steep hills, streams that are transitory. Now, in some places, they only have uh, rivers run through, you know, a couple days a year and then those rivers are dry the rest of the time. So we do see some vegetation it's by no means a, a rainforest but we do have some and, and they do play an important role the roots do go deep into the surface hold on to the sediment keep it from washing away. Okay. So here what you're looking at is actually a dry riverbed. So in March, April, May, when all the snow melts in the tops of these mountains, the rain, uh, sorry, the water, the meltwater, does wash down and flow through here. So we have temporary streams. You can see all the jagged, angular rock. Now in human environments, it's basically the opposite. Heavy vegetation, smooth, round-off hills. Uh, streams have discharge all year long, meaning there's always water flowing through those streams. No transitory streams or, or mice. Now, this is kind of interesting. Here we're looking at a mountainside in Alaska. Alaska is one of the wettest states we have in the United States. Uh, it rains there more often than it doesn't. And what you're seeing is vegetation growing on the side of essentially new rock. Um, so a lot of the land there is relatively young. But we can still find vegetation. So the wetter it is, the more vegetation you get. And then also, and we'll talk more about this when we get more into landscapes, is bedrock site. Some bedrock is more resistant to erosion than others. So sometimes the bedrock, for example, this is limestone, you can see fractures very easily. Uh, acid rain will break it down. Okay, we're actually going to hold off on the exit slip for now. We'll come back to that later. I do want to bring your attention to our Google Classroom. So today we talked about landscapes. Um, we have a landscape practice assignment, so I want to bring your attention to that. So if we zoom in a bit, 
So this assignment is due on Wednesday. I'm going to start you off with the first four. Uh, you're going to use the maps on page two and three of your Earth Science Reference Table to answer the following questions. So the first one's real simple. What is the title on page two of your reference table? So let's pull up ESRT page two. Title is at the top. We just copy that guy over. Nice and simple. Generalized landscape regions in New York City. Now, number two says, what landscape region do we live in? So if we go to page two, and we slide all the way over to the right, you can see that we have the Atlantic Coastal Plain. And for those of you guys that know what New York and Long Island look like, most of you do, um, we're here. We're in the Atlantic Coastal Plain. But in some cases, you might not know where, for example, like let's say Elmira, New York is, or Jamestown, New York, or New York City is. Right? So you have all these, these cities located. Here's Riverhead. So once you know where they are, you can always flip back to page two and approximate where it is. But for us, we all live in the Atlantic coastal plain. I mean, that is unless you live in like the Bronx or Manhattan, then you would write Manhattan prom. That's another small piece of um, the, the continent that comes out there. But for, for most of us, I would say Atlantic coastal plain would be the correct answer. What landscape region is Buffalo in? So let's find Buffalo. Okay, we're not looking on that map. We're looking on this one on page three. So I don't know if you see it, but there's Buffalo. So Buffalo is just at the tip of Lake Erie. So let's go back to this page. Let's find Lake Erie. My computer froze. Come on, you can do it. All right, went too far that time. So uh, the Erie, Ontario lowlands. Okay, yeah, and you can see that that's plains. Lowlands are plains. It's a different way to say it. All right, and the last one I'm going to do with you guys is in what region can you find Devonian age rocks? Use your key on page three. So Devonian age rocks, well, if you recall from last week, we were using this section of the chart. You can see Devonian age rocks. Those are those polka dots, and polka dots are in this section. If we jump up to here, polka dots are in the Allegheny Plateau. All right, pretty simple. So what I want you to do is wrap up questions five through 15 today. All right, so you got about 10 more questions. They shouldn't take you that long. And then you have three analysis questions. I'm especially looking forward to see what you write for this last one. Describe a version of Earth that has no uplift and no leveling. All right. Um, we do have our exit slip. And I'd like you to answer this now. If the climate in New York City slowly began to come, become more and more dry, how would our landscape change? And what would happen if it became more damp? All right. When you're done with that, you guys can go and begin work on the assignment. Uh, and otherwise, I'll be hanging out here for the next 20 minutes or so if you guys need any assistance. All right, take care.